you only need nine mechanics to get top 1% in Rocket League. Yes, you heard me. It's 2023. This game's been out for a while. And even though we've now discovered hundreds of mechanics, I'm telling you 95% of them can be completely ignored if you just want to rank up fast. Don't believe me? Watch this list, check each mechanic for yourself, and if you're still below Grand Champ, leave a comment below. No lying. <laughs> These are the only must-learn mechanics to rank up in Rocket League. Number nine, kickoffs. Being good at kickoffs is a lot like being able to shoot a basketball. Even someone like me has one time shot a basketball accidentally in the right way and it went in the hoop. Just because I've made one basket before, I would never go on the internet and claim that I'm good at free throws or that I'm good at shooting a basketball. Yet for some reason, when platinum ranked Rocket League players win one kickoff against a champ, they go into my YouTube comments and they comment that their kickoff is unbeatable. Look, here's the truth. You could pair somebody who has never played Rocket League before and put a controller in their hand and put them in a kickoff against apparently Jack. And just by sheer chance, this new player might accidentally not know which button is the drive button, start two seconds late to the kickoff, and unintentionally jump and beat apparently Jack in a kickoff. But just because this child let's say, has beat Jack once in the kickoff does not mean he's good at kickoffs. The reason apparently Jack is a pro and you are not is because after AppJack loses that one kickoff against the new Rocket League player, for the next 100 kickoffs, AppJack is never losing again. Here's my point. The reason you need to train kickoffs is because you need to be certain that you are never going to enter a ranked game and get absolutely destroyed and give a free goal away because your kickoff sucks. I'm not saying you need to master the speed flip. I'm saying you need to be able to get a touch on the ball and have a consistent, predictable, and efficient kickoff if you want to rank up. If you practice just a basic double dodge kickoff, flip once, then drive and flip again into the ball, and you can actually do it consistently, it is impossible to be ranked below platinum with an actually good kickoff. Number eight, single jump pops. To win Rocket League, you need to do two things. Number one, make sure the opponent doesn't put the ball in your net. And number two, ideally, if you can, put the ball in their net. <laughs> so for some reason, new players seem to think they need whatever you know flashy mechanic you want to insert in the YouTube search bar. They need that mechanic to rank up. And what I'll tell you right now is that to rank up to Grand Champ, you literally just need to put the ball around your opponent. It doesn't need to be flashy. It doesn't need to be clipped. This goal doesn't have to get you signed to pulse. It just needs to end up in the opponent's net. For this reason, I think one of the most effective mechanics all the way up to GC is simply be able to put the ball on your car and time a single jump, or if you want to get fancy, a double jump to pop the ball over the defender when they early challenge you. The reason single jump pops are so much better than flicks here and why you actually need to listen to what I'm saying and actually try this in your games is because you don't need to have control of the ball to do a single jump pop. All you have to do is time it properly. It doesn't have to be fancy. You just need to jump slightly before the defender challenges you. I promise if you do this, you will score three times as much in your games because you literally just can't mess this up. Genuinely, try it. Number seven, fast aerials. Yes, Luke included a flashy aerial mechanic in this list. This is not a mistake. You actually need to learn how to fast aerial if you want to get to GC. I think you can get to GC faster if you know how to fast aerial. I'm going to be honest with you guys. One comment that I get all the time that I, I'm not gonna hold back that frustrates the hell out of me is when people comment on my YouTube videos that I'm telling you guys you don't need mechanics to rank up because I'm trying to sell you my course. I hate it. I just, it bothers me so much that I tell you you don't need mechanics just so that I can sell you a course. Here's why. I did found a course. I do have something to sell you. My policy there is always just to be transparent. But the reason this frustrates me is because do you guys actually understand if there was one flashy mechanic in Rocket League that you needed to rank up, it would be so much easier to sell you a course on that than what I'm actually doing here. I'm literally making a YouTube video right now. And the whole premise of this video is you don't need that much to rank up. I'm literally recording a video right now to consolidate the 3,000 plus, 4,000 plus hours I put into this game. And the thesis of this video, my idea that I'm trying to get across to you right now is you don't need all 
the extra stuff to rank up. I'm telling you, you don't need me. If you don't want to buy my coaching, you can just watch this video. You don't need me, okay? So it would be easier for me to say you need flashy mechanics and that's why you got to buy my course. I'm telling you, you don't need flashy mechanics and you should only buy my coaching or support what I do if you want to make the rank up process faster and more enjoyable and you want to do it, you know, with a community and you value speed and you value doing it the fun way. But if you just want to get it done, you don't need to do it with me. There's no secret. I'm telling you that in this video. That's the whole point of this video. So let's get back to the point. Fast aerials are the only like semi flashy mechanic that I think you should learn to rank up. Now I did a podcast pro player com who plays for V1 and of course Abjack from Gen G and in the podcast they 100% said they could get to GC without leaving the ground. While it's possible to get to GC without leaving the ground, it's easier if you can fast aerial. For some reason, 90% of players below GC don't know how to fast aerial properly. So I actually made a two minute tutorial on how to fast aerial properly. I think you absolutely should learn fast aerials if your goal is to get to GC. So that way, when you do need to jump up to save a shot quickly, you have the skill set to be able to stop it. Learn fast aerials though, it will save you many goals in your games. And you know what? While we're on the topic of coaching, my team told me I need to do an ad read before we end this video so that the editors can get paid. So I'm going to talk about my coaching program. Here's the update. We have capacity to take on 15 more intermediate ranked players. So, you know, that's between gold and champ watching who want to get that GC title in the next six weeks. If that's you, DM me with the keyword mech to learn more about enrolling in Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. First link in the description. Mechanic number six is half flips slash wave dashes. I'm grouping half flips and wave dashes together because they're both basically recovery mechanics. And because the reason that you need to learn them if you want to get GC is the exact same reason. Half flips and wave dashes seem to be the Rocket League equivalent of flossing your teeth. Listen to me. I promise this will make sense. You know how when you go to the dentist, you sit there and the dentist kind of asks you like, oh, so you've been brushing your teeth one, two times a day. You go, yeah. Yeah. You've been mouthwashing every now and then. Yeah. And then they ask, and you've been flossing twice a day. And you kind of go, yeah, that's kind of what it's like when I coach people on half flips and wave dashes. And I'll be like, what do you want to work on today? They'll be like, uh, my fast aerials seem pretty good. My air roll shots are doing good. Um, why don't we just watch a replay? And so I'll get in this replay with them. And it's very clear to me. I, I ask them like, yeah, so you've been practicing your recoveries, right? And the student will be like, right. And then we'll go watch the replay. And for some reason, I'm, I'm looking and I'm not seeing a lot of half flips or a lot of wave dashes. <laughs> and the point is, is for some reason, everybody says they know how to half flip and wave dash because it seems so simple, right? Everybody says they brush their teeth twice a day and they floss twice a day. But like, do you really brush your teeth twice a day and floss twice a day? Okay, maybe you brush your teeth twice a day, but the point is, the reason you need to learn half flips and wave dashes is because it needs to be automatic. You don't get the benefit from being able to half flip correctly once a game. So point is, half flips and wave dashes, they are on this list because you need to do them every single time. It's not like a 40% time and they like, uh, I'm a 40% half flipper. You need to be a 100% half flipper. And only then can you go to the comment section and complain about not being being GC. But if you've messed up a half flip or a wave dash in the last, I don't care, month in a ranked game, you cannot complain about not being GC. I just revoked that right. Get out of my comment section. Number five is backwards saves. Everyone below Grand Champ obsesses about the offensive mechanics. You know, the reason you're watching this is because you've probably been struggling to rank up. And I don't know why this happens, but everybody below GC, when they don't rank up, they think to themselves, what do I need to learn to rank up? You know, am I, what am I missing? Am I missing air dribbles? Am I missing flip resets? And what if I just told you the reason you're not winning your games is not because you're not scoring. The reason you're losing your games below Grand Champ is because you can't drive backwards. Like you don't know how to shadow defend. So why are, why are we obsessing about air dribbles? I did this too. When I was trying to get better and get to grand champ, I thought like I needed to learn directional air roll for some reason. And then I spent 300, actually, I don't know how many, probably like 300 hours at least before I was grand champ. And then I spent almost a thousand learning directional air roll. And that didn't help at all until I was grand champ two or grand champ three. So I'm no better than you. Let me just tell you so that you can learn from my mistakes. If you just have good defense, you can get to champ two, champ three free. Like you literally don't need to be able to score. So point 
point is, before you move down to the next ones on these lists, make sure that your defense is at least as half as good as your offense. Because if you want to rank up faster than 99% of Rocket League players, you need to stop training what 99% of Rocket League players are training. And if you just do like five minutes of my shadow defense drill. You'll just, it's, anyways, um, I'm not even gonna try to end this section of the video with some like powerful statement about why you need to learn backward saves because uh, you probably already skipped to the offensive mechanics. Number four, joystick air roll. You need to learn joystick air roll up to a point. And I need to be precise here before people yell at me. Here's what I found from my experience. If you wanna get to GC, you might, think that you need to know how to directional air roll in the air, you know, how to carry the ball on your car while air dribbling and be able to do those spins and, you know, 360 twists that you see in the clips. As cool as that is, that's just not true. And it's not what I'm saying you need to learn. There are actually two different types of air roll in Rocket League, right? There's directional air roll. That's like air roll left, air roll right, the continuous spins that you see people doing in the air. And then there's a joystick air roll. This is the air roll that you literally need to press down on your joystick to indicate the direction you want to go. And I think low rank players think that when I say you need to learn air roll, I'm telling them they need to learn directional air roll. That's actually not true. Directional air roll is great and it's good for aerial mechanics at the high ranks, you know, like GC plus, I would say it's essential, but below GC, you can get 90% of the benefit from just joystick air roll. And you know, when I was watching the pro scene seven years ago, back in 2016, 2017, this is how it actually used to be. Every pro used to just use joystick air roll because you can learn it faster and get more results quicker. Nowadays, yes, pros are using one directional air roll, if not two, you know, the elite pros are now using two directional air rolls. But the truth is, if you want to just rank up fast, I recommend you do things in the right order. And what that probably means is, yeah, is directional air roll cool? Sure. But is it what you should be learning right now? I'm going to take a guess. And for 99% of you watching, probably just not yet. So if you're looking for more on this, I'll have some air roll videos linked on screen because I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about how I like to explain air roll because I know it is tricky. But joystick air roll is definitely a top five mechanic mechanic below GC. Make sure you have joystick air roll down, but don't obsess about perfecting directional. That will come with time. Mechanic number three, clears. One of the biggest lies that I see spread by high rank Rocket League players is that you need to have good shooting to rank up. I'm not going to say you don't need to be able to hit the ball hard. This myth that you have to be good at shooting to rank up in Rocket League is just not true. The truth is, even myself, I'm going to sound annoying, but you know, as top 0.1% rank player, you know, I, I am in the higher bracket. I'm not SSL, but I'm good enough right? Even at my rank, players shooting is just not accurate. You don't need to be able to hit the ball accurately to rank up. In fact, hitting the ball accurately in Rocket League is ridiculously hard. Even pro players miss routine shots because just placing the ball where you want is that hard in this game. Instead, what you actually need to rank up, especially below GC, you simply just need to be able to hit the ball hard somewhere on net. One of the most effective strategies below GC is not even shooting the ball at the net, but instead intentionally shoot the ball above it. Because players defense at the lower ranks is so bad, if you just hit the ball high up above their net, most of them will jump up, completely miss it, and the ball will bounce right off the backboard down to the center for you for a free goal. So yes, you should train your shooting and try to get more accurate over time. But just to be honest with you and just to be realistic, it's going to take thousands of hours to become accurate at shooting in Rocket League. Instead, if you're low ranked, just focus on being able to time the up bounce and hit the ball hard. And if you can simply hit it with power near your opponent's net, you're going to rank up three times as fast as the people who are obsessing about being perfect. Number two, power slide. Some of you watching will hear me say power slide and just instantly turn the section off thinking you know how to power slide. But let me tell you right now, you are power sliding wrong. I don't know if you know this, but when I coach people below champ, one of the most common things that they complain about is, you know, getting bumped in their games and spinning out. Have you ever had like a situation where you accidentally run into your teammate or something and they cut you off and they like bump you and then your car spins out and you take forever to recover? There's one button you could hold that if you press will make your recoveries literally look like the pros. It's a real thing and it's called power slide or drift, whatever you want to call it. People below Grand Champ don't realize that the secret to playing fast and looking smooth is hold power slide every 
time you land. This is not to mention that once you get good at holding power slide on your landings, you can also learn how to power slide and create sharper turns and move around the field faster. And this is so important because everybody below Grand Champ seems to now understand that, oh, if I learn how to air roll, I can move through the air faster. I can move through the air more efficiently, but nobody wants to connect the dot and realize that, oh, if I knew how to power slide better, I could move on the ground faster. Point is the vast majority of your time in ranked is going to be grounded, especially if you're below semi-pro level. So if you want to rank up fastest, learn mechanics that happen in situations you're going to be in in ranked. Learn power slide more than you learn air roll. I know that's a cold take, but I'm telling you, if you get good at power slide, people in the low ranks will be confused. Learn power slide. On to number one, the most important mechanic to rank up is bounce dribbling. Look, before you click off and get upset because, oh, of course, Luke just told me bounce dribbling is what I need to do to rank up. You're probably thinking, oh, he must not be telling me the truth. There's got to be something else to it. I want to reveal something to you about getting good at Rocket League. And honestly, this is about getting good fast at anything in life. You see, bounce dribbling is the best mechanic in Rocket League for the same reason that most people are overweight or not in good shape. Let me explain. When you talk to somebody who's in really good shape, right, physically, like whether they're buff or they're just kind of like fit, right, they're athletic, you know, you ask them, what'd you do? to get in shape. You know, what's the secret? We like to think, and this is me included, that these people who are athletic are, you know, they're doing something special. They've got some secret. You know, the, you ask them and they just tell you, honestly, man, ever since I kind of just got off my couch and walked around and did physical activity, I kind of lost weight and it actually wasn't that hard. We hear that and we think to ourselves, what? <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. You just ate healthier and moved more and you lost weight. Yeah, sure. Where are the diet pills? Where's the, where's the secret sauce? And we like to think that it's just too good to be true, right? So I'm sitting here and I'm telling you that the number one most important mechanic to rank up in Rocket League is simply being able to control the ball, bounce it back and forth on the ground and then shoot it. Bounce dribbling. That's what bounce dribbling fundamentally is. And you might not be upset, but you might be thinking to yourself, ah, of course, yeah, he would, he would tell me it's bounce dribbling, but that can't be true. This is me trying to tell you like how some people say, you know, to lose weight, you literally just need to eat less and move more. This is me telling you the Rocket League equivalent. Like you are asking me, how do I rank up. I am telling you, it is simply being able to bounce the ball and control it on the ground and shoot it when they challenge you. You know, hit it to the left and then cut right when they challenge you. Ranking up in Rocket League is that simple. Yeah, you could rank up in Rocket League by mastering air dribbles and flip resets in the same way that you could get in shape in real life by doing four hours of hill sprints every morning at 4 a.m. I have tons of videos on actually how to bounce dribble and how to use this in game, especially in my Road to SSL series. I literally show it because I know a lot of people have trouble executing this stuff in game. Learn how to bounce dribble. And I promise you it is impossible to be good at bounce dribbling and be stuck in champ. I don't care what you say. I have made up my mind. And since most people aren't watching in this at this point in the video, I am getting more extreme and more emotional. My team is probably going to fire me because I went too off the rails on a YouTube recording. Hopefully I still have a job and I'm still the guy on camera in the next video. Bye.